God bless you all. God bless all of you that are in right now. May the Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name. We are live. Go ahead and tell somebody that we are live because tonight is going to be a powerful night in uh, the Lord. We're going to have a great time of teaching, a great time of deliverance, and a great time of healing as well. I believe that many people will be healed tonight. Many people will be delivered. We got to make sure you have the faith for it. And some of you will be healed um, progressively. All right. So um, I'm going to give you guys a free a, a few moments to go ahead and um, invite some people. Invite some people. Go ahead. Invite some people. Let me know where you're watching from so we can get started um, in a little bit. I'm going to call it some names and places where I'm seeing you guys watch from. Trust me, it's going to be it's going to be a good time tonight. It is going to be a great time tonight in Jesus mighty name. Um, God bless you, James George. God bless you. Um, watching from Hawaii. Watching from Nambia. Waco, Texas. We have Vanessa in the building. Naomi, Ohio, South Carolina. All y'all in here. Absolutely is I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, y'all. It is a pleasure to be able to be with you all back again. It's been a minute, it's been a while. I've been really busy with you know life, uh the conference with the Romeo Sai, you know, being out in the USA, don't really go a lot. Um, it was a powerful time. It's something I've never experienced, something that has truly shifted me spiritually. I learned so much from him. Now, um, I want you guys to let me know. Toronto in the building. I want to let you guys, I want you guys to let me know. Can y'all hear me? Is the sound good? Is the music too loud? Is everything, is everything clear? Um, let me know. Is everything clear? Everything sound good? So we can begin shortly. I want you guys to be expectant tonight in Jesus name, because we are about to reveal something that's going to bring forth liberation something that's going to bring forth deliverance something that's going to actually bring forth insight and change somebody's life tonight if you believe that god is going to do something powerful tonight say god is good in the comments say god is good in the comments if you believe god is going to do something good all right Say God is good in the comments if you believe um, he's going to do something good tonight. So our focal point tonight, okay? Our focal point tonight is going to be infirmities, okay? Demons that cause infirmities and sickness, okay? Demons that cause infirmities and sickness, and one thing we must understand is that there are many people that are battling certain diseases, certain infirmities, certain sicknesses that are sourced by evil spirits. I'm going to lay a foundation really quick. I have brought many people through deliverance from spirits of infirmities and sickness now not everything is a demon issue okay i'm gonna be very balanced here not everything is a demon issue but there are many cases where the issue is sourced from the demonic and I've done this deliverance many, many times. And I'll begin to talk about this uh, uh, more into the stream. All right. And it's going to be absolutely powerful. All right. So demons that cause infirmities and sickness. 
all right so before we i really begin to go and really teach i want you guys to go ahead share this send it to some people because this is something you want to be a part of you do not want it's something that you want to be a part of and also other people it's not something it's not something that you want to miss and it's not something you want someone to miss because it is going to be a powerful time all right so um like i said there are demonic forces that cause infirmities and sicknesses okay the bible says this turn with me to luke chapter 13 verse 10 through 11. luke chapter 13 verse 10 through 11. now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the sabbath and behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up now we're going to stop there really quick the key phrase right there, the key verse right there is spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Can we ponder on, on that verse? Can we ponder on that phrase for a moment? Who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. So there was a woman in scripture that had an issue that expressed itself physically, that manifested itself physically in the body that was sourced from a demon. And she was bound by this demon for 18 years. What we must understand is that demons have assignments. Demons have functions and they operate differently they will do different things in your body finances different areas of your life because it's not the fact that it's just a demon this na the name of the demon is infirmity no it's the assignment it's the function of the demon it's the function of the demon so the demon's assignment in this woman's life was to cripple her now we're going to read it in the new living new living translation it says this one sabbath day as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. So in this translation, it says, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight there are many people today who are crippled many people today that have sicknesses and diseases that are sourced from an evil spirit the bible makes it very clear that your situation can be demonic but there are some christians today they say oh it can't be demonic so everything that you're dealing with everything that you're going through you think it's just natural causes Oh, the power of God is not great enough to heal you of your situation. You pray to God for your healing, you're not getting healed. Because sometimes your situation needs deliverance. Sometimes your situation needs an expelling of an evil spirit. Uh, an expelling of an evil spirit. Faith alone is not enough. You also need deliverance. You need the works of deliverance. You need the works of the laying on of hands. You need the works of fasting. You need the works of prayer because the bible says faith without works is dead listen to this one sabbath day as jesus was teaching in a synagogue he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit she had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight you see one thing we must understand is that when a person is is ruled by a sickness that is sourced from an evil spirit they will not have the capacity to overcome it because it has not occurred naturally but supernaturally can we ponder on what i just said right now when a person 
is ruled by a sickness that is sourced from an evil spirit, they will not have the capacity to overcome it because it has not occurred naturally, but supernaturally. Evil spirits that cause infirmities will disable your body from functioning properly as God has ordained. There will be physical and biological disorders. Luke chapter 13, verse 10 through 11 again. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. She was unable to stand up straight. So her issue did not occur naturally. Her issue has occurred supernaturally by ways of an evil spirit. She, she, didn't, she, she didn't have the capacity to stand up straight, the Bible says, because of a demon. You see, listen to this. When the fall of man had taken place, God cursed Adam and Eve. But he did not curse them with infirmities and biological disorders. Listen. When the fall of man had taken place, God cursed Adam and Eve, but he did not curse them with infirmities and biological disorders. Okay, now let's go to that verse. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 through 19. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then, when he, then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face, and you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and thus you shall return. So it was never the will of God for humanity to be sick. Even though Adam and Eve were cursed by God, they were still in good health. health. Catch this. Even though Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, entered into rebellion, entered into you know the, the, the fallen world, they were still in good health. They experienced pain and suffering but they were not ruled by it. This is because evil spirits did not take root in the lives of humanity yet, but they eventually came by the rights of Adam and Eve to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil received the mandate to steal, kill, and to destroy when, he's, when he was in the garden. But he was not able to fulfill that mandate until Adam and Eve gave him legal rights by eating the forbidden fruit. Do you understand me? So the reason Adam and Eve were not ruled by the spirit of infirmity and whatnot and all those issues is because evil spirits did not take place or root in the lives of humanity, but they eventually came. Things progressed. Wickedness got more wicked. John 10.10. 10. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Let's stop right there. So the devil's assignment is to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Bible is telling us these things, that the assignment of the devil is to steal, to kill, and destroy. And if we do not grasp that, if we do not understand that, that the, the Bible is speaking to Christians, the Bible is for Christians. When we're reading it, it's Christians. Jesus is telling us, the disciples are telling us that the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Who is he killing? He's killing people. He's destroying people. He's stealing people's destinies, stealing people's money. He's coming against you. But you read the word, oh, don't have fear. But the Bible warns you 
that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is why Jesus said, this is why Apostle Paul said, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. We understand the ways of Satan, so we will not be bound by his ways, his schemes, and his strategies. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. So the mandate of Jesus Christ is to bring life and life more abundantly. But the mandate of Satan is to bring death. And this oftentimes comes in the form of infirmities. Do you understand? The mandate of Jesus Christ is to bring life and is to bring life and life more abundantly. But the mandate of Satan is to bring death. And this will oftentimes manifest in the form of infirmities, anemia, uh, your irons going crazy, fibroids, heavy bleeding, cancer, all these different issues rooted by an evil spirit. Now, not every issue is rooted by an evil spirit. Let's be balanced here. But in many scenarios and cases, it's rooted by an evil spirit. Now, when we are dealing with the spirit of infirmity, we are also dealing with the spirit of death. Okay? Because the objective of the infirmity is to kill you slowly. Oh, The objective of the infirmity is to kill you slowly. The objective of that infirmity is to, is to cause another infirmity that's even greater. Or you had this one illness. Then because of that illness, it transformed into this. If you don't deal the issue, the beginning of that issue, it will get worse. Stage one, stage two, stage three. Listen. The spirit of death will manifest in such a way um, that a person will suffer slowly with an infirmity and be completely incapable to find rest because demons are restless, are restless and cause restlessness. Can, can I say that again for some of you? The spirit of, the spirit of death will manifest in such a way that a person will suffer slowly with an infirmity and be completely incapable to find rest because demons are restless and cause restlessness. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Matthew chapter 12, verse 20. Matthew chapter 12, verse uh, 43. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. So the characteristic, the persona of demonic forces is restlessness. This is why the Bible says that the enemy roams around the earth looking for whom he may devour. He is always looking because he cannot find rest. The Bible makes it very clear that rest comes from God. Even the devil cannot rest today. He has to continue to go and go and go because the Bible says that his time is short. The spirit of death will manifest in such a way that a person will suffer slowly with an infir infirmity and be completely incapable to find rest every day. <gasps> oh, the chemotherapy is not working. This is not working. Yes, people die of natural causes, yes. But a spirit of death will cause you every day to suffer like the woman with the spirit of infirmity. 18 years, bent double down. Demons on assignment 24 seven and they do not sleep. They are restless. And they are always looking for a body to destroy. The only way a demon can find rest is by residing in a human body. 
But as they accomplish that rest, they take away the rest of the body they have entered. Listen, I don't think you are listening. I don't think you are with me right now. I, I don't think you are with me right now and really grasping what I'm telling you. The only way a demon can find rest in a body is by residing in a human body. But as they accomplish that rest by residing in the body, they will take away the rest that God has given to the body, given to that person. They will take it away. So they get rest in the body. Then they take away the rest. Insomnia. Nightmares. All these things are just going crazy in your life because a demon is causing these things. You wake up at the night, bruises and scratches all over your body. Spiritual spouses. The objective of every evil spirit is to take away your rest. To take away your peace. The woman that had the spirit of infirmity had no rest she was unable to stand up straight for 18 years because of an evil spirit 18 years no rest luke chapter 13 verse 10 through 11 one sabbath day as jesus was teaching in a synagogue he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit she had been bent that double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. You know, some people you may be seeing, you're, they're walking like this. Sometimes it's an evil spirit. Sometimes it's a demonic force and you don't know it. You, you think it's just, sometimes it's a demonic force. Rest comes from the Lord. And when the Lord ministered, Unto this woman, she found rest. Listen to this revelation. Rest comes from the Lord. And when the Lord ministered unto this woman, she found rest. She became, she became free from demonic bondage. Luke chapter 13, verse 12 through 13. New Living Translation. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight How she praised God. So this woman probably hasn't praised God her whole life because she had no rest because she was bent over for 18 years. How many of you are dealing with something in your life and you're realizing you haven't praised God in a very long time because you feel depressed? because you have cancer, because you have anemia, and it's draining you and taking all of your energy, taking all of your joy. But I come to prophesy to you today that the Lord is about to give you rest and he's about to extract that demon out of you. He's about to extract that infirmity out of you. Yes. Notice how the scripture reads that she was healed of her sickness. Now, the Bible made it clear in the verse before that, it said that she had a spirit of infirmity. But how can it be a spirit of infirmity, but you get healed from it and not delivered? What you must understand that some healings can only take place if a demon is removed from the body. So when Jesus said you are healed of your sickness, Jesus is just to the outward world that is not discerning, to the, to the, to the outer people that are not discerning. When Jesus healed that woman, he thought they, they saw just a healing. But to the, to the discerning, it was a deliverance. It was a deliverance. Notice how the scripture reads that she was healed of her sickness. But the Bible, the Bible says that her sickness was source of an evil spirit. Some healings can only take place if a demon is removed out of the body. To the undiscerning, Jesus just healed her. But to the discerning, she was delivered from an evil spirit that caused the sickness. There are many people that are dealing with sicknesses that are sourced from evil spirits. And throughout Jesus' ministry, he dealt with many people 
that had the spirit of infirmity. Go with me to Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 through 17. When the evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. So that prophecy that uh, Isaiah was talking about, Isaiah was also talking about demonic infirmities and demonic diseases. So when Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus began to walk in his mandate of authority and power, he was really walking in a capacity to give us liberation from demonic infirmities and diseases. The Bible says, when evening came, many who were possessed were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. So there was people who were demon possessed that also had a sickness, that were also sick. Jesus was brought people who were demon possessed and casted out their demons. And he also casted out the demons that caused people to be sick. So Jesus was standing there and all the people that were demon possessed were brought to Jesus. And the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus casted out the demons out of people. And now these demon possessed people that had sicknesses that were caused by the demons, the Bible said that Jesus healed them. So you can also be healed from an evil spirit. When you are healed from an evil spirit, what it really means is that you are being delivered from a spirit that has caused an infirmity. So your body is now being healed because your body has now begun to have biological disorders because of an evil spirit. So when the spirit of infirmity is extracted, your body begins to find rest. Your body begins to be healed because the disorder came from a demon and a demon has has the mandate and the assignment to take away rest from your body and when the demon takes away rest what begins to manifest is sickness because the only thing that cause it causes a person or a body to be restless is sickness oh le brandose, brandose. the only thing in a human body that causes a person to be restless is infirmity is infirmity Many of you don't even know that your insomnia is demonic. To take away your rest. And now when you have insomnia, it turns into depression. You now get sick because of restlessness. A am I revelating or something? Insomnia. It's the same thing as restlessness. The working of demonic forces. Oh, because we know even scientifically, biologically, if your body does not get rest, you will get sick. How many of you, 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 you haven't slept? Oh, I feel sick, man. Uh, 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 uh. So, so the demonic force, all it needs to do is mess with your sleep to open up a door to sickness. Because insomnia is really restlessness. And restlessness can open the door to infirmity that is caused by insomnia or that is caused by restlessness. It was never the will of God for us to be sick, but because of a result of sin, because of a result of sin, we now experience sickness and infirmities. This is why Jesus gave certain people the power of healing. Why? Why did we need the power of healing? Why did man need now the power to cast out demons and all these things? Because Adam and Eve have allowed illegal authorities to have access into humanity. And we had no way to overcome these things. So God had to send the power of the Holy Ghost to contend against the forces of darkness and liberate his people from diseases and infirmities and situations that were demonically empowered and sourced. It was never the will of God for us to be sick. But because of the result of sin, we now experience sickness 
and infirmities. But Jesus is willing. Jesus is willing to heal and deliver us because it's not his will, even though it's our reality because of sin. Let me tell you something right now. Jesus is willing to heal you and deliver you because it's not his will for us to be sick, even though it's our reality because of sin. Jesus died on the cross because, our, because of the reality of our sin. Just because it's our reality does not mean it's God's will. Oh my God. Just because it's our reality does not mean it is God's will. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 3, when Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You can set me free from this infirmity. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. So Jesus Christ is willing to heal you. Jesus Christ is willing to deliver you. But the reason many people are not getting healing and the healing is because they do not know that they need deliverance. They do not know that what they are contending against is demonic. Is demonic. It is demonic. Now, there are many people that are not getting healing. Also, it may not be demonic, but some people, there are some people, the Bible talks about that God has given certain people a gift of healing, a gift of miracles. So there's certain people that can perform healings at a greater dimension than the average person because that average person doesn't have the gift. Now, the Bible says we will all lay our hands upon the sick and they'll be healed. But the difference between God giving you an anointing versus you actually having a mantle. This is why the Bible talks about different gifts. To some, he gave the work of miracles. To some, he gave the gift of prophecy. To some, he gave the, the gift of uh, um, interpretation of tongues, a diversity of this. So there are, there are mantles and gifts that the Lord has given to each individual. But as a believer, we have the, we have the power and the authority to be able to pray for the sick and be healed. But what many people do not understand is that when you pray for someone to be healed, you yourself you must have a, a, a personable, intimate relationship with the Lord. So when you pray for someone to be healed, you are praying from a place of an intimate relationship with Jesus. Now, there are many people that pray for people and they're not healed because they themselves that are praying do not have an intimate relationship with the Lord. You are not even connected to the power, the anointing of God. So you are doing things by faith when realistically your faith is dead because you do not have that relationship to really pull on the grace of God. There is a level of authority that comes by prayer and fasting. There's a level of anointing and a level of grace that comes by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting kills the flesh and allows you to be more intimate, allows you to pull more of God within you. It allows you to give more of yourself unto God. So when you go to people, they experience the kingdom of God through you. Now, how can a person experience the kingdom of God through you if you do not have a prayer life, if you are not living in pure, if you are not seeking first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, if you are not putting on the full armor of God, when we walk on this earth, we must understand that we are bringing forth the kingdom of God on this earth. I feel the glory of God in this place. I feel the glory of God in this place. There are many women today listening to me and you're battling with a issues of blood. There's some women on here. You're battling with irregular cycles, menstrual. You're battling with heavy bleeding. 
get in your cycle you're on birth control the doctor has told you if you get off birth control you might bleed to death you're on birth control because there's some biological disorder within your body so you have to be on birth control your whole life you've been on birth control since you were 16. there was something internally happening with you that god wants to set you free from tonight there are many women i've prayed for that their fibroids, their, their menstrual issues, their, their lack of, of, of period, whatever, was sourced from an evil spirit. There's a woman I prayed for on TikTok. She told me she has not gotten her period in a long time and she's on all this medication to get it. It's not happening. I begin to bring her through deliverance live. She began to manifest, manifest, manifest. And she told me the next day, hey, shakabante all glory to God, the river began to flow. The river began to flow and she made a video and a testimony about it. This was in 2020, 2020. Hey, Shaka Monday. There was a woman I also brought through deliverance. Uh, uh, I'm praying for this woman. I tell her, I tell her this. The Lord is telling me that there are evil spirits that will visit you in the night and they will collect your blood and, and, and collect your blood. And this is why you're having the heavy bleeding and whatnot. The heavy bleeding is a, a, is a, is a revelation of blood being sucked out of you. And the woman began to scream. The woman screamed and she said, oh my gosh, this is confirmation because I'm having dreams that people are coming and collecting blood. I will see myself laying on the floor bleeding and people are coming with buckets and collecting my blood. But in the realm of the natural, all you see is bleeding. All the doctors see is bleeding. But in the realm of the spirit, there was a blood sucking spirit I brought many women to deliverance with a, a demon is speaking and it says, I have come to suck her blood. And you have low iron issues and you've been on this pills for so long. Nothing is getting better. You're getting blood transfusions, all of these things because blood is being removed from you. Hey, now in the book of Luke, there was a woman with the issue of blood. Luke chapter eight, turn with me to Luke chapter eight, verse 43 through 48 uh, a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding i'm reading from uh, the new living translation a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding and she could find no cure no cure so let's stop right there let's ponder on that verse so there is this woman that bled constantly for 12 years and if you read throughout the the other verses it says that she spent all of her money at different physicians physicians different doctors different nurses di all that stuff and the bible says that she continually grew worse so to the point where her bleeding could not be fixed by natural means but only supernatural power of god what was it that this woman with the issue of blood could not be healed from that the doctors could not help her 12 years the bible says constant bleeding she got so desperate to the point where she said i need to touch jesus she had a heavy flow of ble bleeding maybe her garments she had to change herself all the time Verse 44, coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. So, 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 so for the supernatural power of God. So this woman, the only way that she could be healed of her constant bleeding was the supernatural power. So this makes me believe, my own, this is speculation, my own speculation. It makes me believe that her issue was sourced from an evil spirit. It makes me believe that this woman's issue was sourced from an evil spirit. Because when I look at all the deliverances I've done, I've brought many people through deliverance from the issue of blood. I brought many people, women through deliverance from the issue of blood.
Verse 46, but Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Okay. Now, there are some of you that your illness, your sickness is a, re is a result of generational sickness. You have to listen to what I'm telling you. You have to listen to what I'm telling you. The reason generational sickness exists, such as cancer, you had cancer, your mom had cancer, consistent sicknesses, the same sickness in the family, and it just passes down. The reason this exists is because of a covenant of sin and the lack of repentance and deliverance that has given demonic forces that right to steal, kill, and destroy. A covenant of sin and a lack of repentance and deliverance gives demonic forces the right to steal, kill, and destroy. And when the devil comes to steal, come to destroy, it's going to manifest in different ways, in different types of infirmities. It's going to manifest differently. It's not someone coming with a sword and putting it in your neck. It is progressive. You're, it's going to go undetected until you get out. You get an x-ray that find cancer in your bones. Oh, but we rebuke that God forbid in Jesus name. So there are many people that are byproducts to the covenant of sin in their family. Now, some of you may say, oh, no, the Bible says we do not take part in the sins of our and our parents. When I'm saying covenant of sin. That covenant of sin has brought demons. Yes, the Lord will not hold you. Yes, the Lord will not hold you hold you captive of your father's sin. But the spiritual baggage that your father has brought in, you had to deal with it. You had to deal with it. If, if if your father has diabetes, hepatitis B, it's in your blood. You had to deal with it. If your father went to go get it slept around, whatever, got AIDS, STDs, and all these things, you can be affected. Your mother could be affected. You'll probably say, No, why do I gotta take in the part? Why do I gotta partake in the sins of my father? The Bible says that this is not gonna happen. Why do I have AIDS? Why do I have hepatitis B? Why is this? No, 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 no. You are not gonna be judged for what your father did, but you will be a victim. Of what your father has brought in because of sin. Now, because there has been a a bloodline or a past of covenantal wickedness, there has also been a covenant with demonic forces. Every demon has the assignment of death. Every demon has the assignment to kill, steal, and to destroy. So when you sin without repentance, you have given demons legality to cause death in your family. Choose the way of life because if you don't, it will affect you and your children you do not only sin against God when you rebel, but you open doors to demonic forces and witchcraft. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, a curse that is causeless, a curse that is undeserving, will not land on its intended victim. And we read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, and give no opportunity to the devil. So the Bible is telling us, Apostle Paul is telling us that you can give an opportunity to the devil 
So when you give an opportunity to the devil, that curse is no longer causeless, it has a cause. That curse is no longer undeserving, it is deserved because God operates by legal rights, jurisdiction. God operates like a judge. And we know the Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. So there is a courtroom the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about that the sons of God, Satan, they went to the courtroom of heaven. And in that courtroom, they will begin to what? Accuse. Satan would accuse people. Hey, this person is living in sin. This person is rebelling against you. The Bible talks about a courtroom that Satan will, will go to. How will Satan call the accuser of brethren? Why? Because he accuses you to God. Oh, So when you live in sin, Satan goes to the courtroom of heaven. The demons, they wait and they say, they go at the faster than the speed of light. And they say, hey, your word says this. Abednego is living in sin, wickedness. He has rebelled you. He has done all these things wrong against you. Your word says this. God, are you, are you going to go against your own word? Are you going to go against your own word? And this is why demons gain legal access in your body. Now you say, why would God allow this to happen? It's not the fact that God allowed it to happen. You caused it to happen because you broke biblical protocol. You did not adhere to the principles of God. And the accuser of the brethren went to the courtroom and he came with his case. And he said, it's been 15 years. They've been living in sin. They didn't repent. I'm allowed to touch them. And then they go, ooh. This is why the Bible says that the angels are kept around the righteous. The righteous, the righteous, the righteous. This is why Satan cannot touch Job. Did, 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 listen to this. When, 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 when Job began to get boils all over his body, it was because God allowed it. Satan could not touch Job without the authorization of God. Hey, Satan could not touch Job without the authorization of God. He couldn't. God said, you can do anything to him except take his soul. You can't take his life. So what did, what did, what did Satan do? He caused sickness. Hey. So Satan causes sickness on people. So Satan can cause sickness. But that sickness was not connected to the spirit of death because it was limited by God. Some of you are not catching a revelation. Some of you are not catching a revelation. When Job got sick, it was not connected to the spirit of death because it was limited by God where he cannot die from the sickness. It would only try him. It was only a testing. But when you open up doors to the devil, that sickness is connected to the spirit of death. <laughs> the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. So the Lord is saying, choose my way or it's not going to go good for you. Now, when you choose the way of death, the way of curses, you got to understand you'll be chastised, disciplined by God. God will turn his face. And in the process of all of that, you have now invited the forces of darkness. So many people have picked up generational infirmities. They have picked up all these things because they have re rejected, rejected God. They have gone in the way of death and curses. And then now have invited spirits. Because when the Lord said that I put before you life and death, blessings and curses, choose life so that you and your children may live. The Lord is saying, if you do not adhere to my principles, if you do not obey me, you're going to end up in a place of death because you're opening up, opening up doors to the devil. Yes. Some of you are having dreams. People are shooting you. You're having dreams. People are coming to kill you. The spirit of death is knocking on your door. But tonight in the name of Jesus, may it be canceled. May it be destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now listen to me very well. 
Even if your issue is not demonic, Jesus is willing to heal you. Let me say it again. Even if your issue is not demonic, Jesus is willing to heal you. <laughs> the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Now, before we go there, let me say this again. Even if, if your issue is not demonic, Jesus is willing to heal you. There was a man that had leprosy. And he came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, if you are willing to make me clean. His issue wasn't demonic. But he said, if you are willing to make me clean. And the Lord said to him that I am willing. The Lord said, I am willing to make you clean. So even if your issue is not demonic, Jesus is willing to heal you. Miracles, signs, and wonders are not of old, but they are for the present day. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 through 5, However, it was our sickness that he himself bore and our pains that he carried. Yet we ourselves assumed that he had been afflicted, struck down by God and humiliated, but he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid up upon him and by his wounds we are healed. Do you not understand that the gifts of the spirit of healing and the miracles did not come af until after Jesus died on the cross? God has given us the capacity to lay our hands upon the sick and they shall recover after the finished work of the cross. So when Jesus died on the cross, he bore our infirmities. He bore our sickness. And he said, I will die for everyone's infirmity. I will die for everyone's sickness. I will die for everyone's wrongdoing. And when I resurrect, I will resurrect with power and I will send out my spirit and I will anoint my people in the last days that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. So Jesus died so we may have life. Jesus died so we may overcome infirmities and sickness. Because there was a time where there was no prophet speaking except for John the Baptist. Where there was silence. There was no miracle signs and wonders. And people were bound with infirmities for 12 years. People were bound with infirmities for 18 years. But until the man Jesus appeared, died on the cross, bore our sicknesses. He resurrected with dunamis power for all that who believe in him will operate in. Because the Bible says that these signs shall fall follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons in my name they will heal the sick so healing the sick is the manifestation of what Jesus did on the cross Jesus said I will die for every person that is sick that is afflicted from a demon I will die for every person that is afflicted by a spirit of infirmity I will die for them and then when I come back, I will send my spirit that will anoint them, to cast out demons, and to heal people from the things I died for. Dunamis. And through the finished work of the cross, this is where we come to James chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And if he has committed sins, he will be, be forgiven. Provoking the idea that the person's sickness could be sourced because he opened up a door through sin. This is why when Jesus would heal certain people or deliver certain people, Jesus would say what? Sin no more. A am I revelating for you guys? Jesus would heal and deliver certain people and say, sin 
no more. Don't give the devil an opportunity. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. If. So the, pers the person's sickness could be a result of this sin. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 41 verse 3, the Lord sustains him on his sick bed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. Now that is my prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. That while you're on your sick bed, the Lord will sustain you. And in your illness, the Lord will restore you to full health because what? The Lord is willing. Someone type in the comments and say, the Lord is willing. The Lord is willing. Luke chapter 10, verse 8 through 9. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Verse 9. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. So when you get healed, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The Bible says a prayer like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So the kingdom of God coming, when you're praying for the will of God in your life, the will of God is for you to be healed and delivered. Because the Bible says, heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. And I want you to know that the kingdom of God is about to come near to you right now in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of God is about to come near to you right now in the name of Jesus. So for the next five minutes, we are going to pray. If there are any sins that you are committing right now, I want you to repent. The Lord is willing to forgive you. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And after you have asked for forgiveness, we're going to cry out to the Lord. Lord, if you are willing, heal me. Lord, if you are willing, restore me. And after the five minutes, we will, I will pray deliverance. But I'm going to pray in tongues. I'm going to pray for you as well. Father, I thank you for your people, O God. I thank you, O God, if you are willing, Jesus, if you are willing, O God, make your people clean. Whatever they are dealing with, O God, if you are willing, make your people clean, Jesus. You told the leper, you said, I am willing, O God. Father, I pray, O God, that you would touch each and every person watching this stream under the sound of my voice i pray in the name of jesus that you would deliver them from every infirmity that you oh god will touch them in the name of jesus right now in the name of jesus oh god rapanzo kelivianto ramanso vedize le kalavakuze vindeleveku ve iskamando Come on, the Lord is delivering someone from the spirit of death right now. The Lord is setting someone free right now. There's an anointing coming upon you right now. The Lord is setting you free right now from a spirit of death that is manifested in your body as an infirmity. The Lord is delivering you right now from that evil spirit. He's setting you free right now in the name of Jesus. Anemia die cancer die fibroids die heavy bleeding die depression die in the name of jesus die 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 in the name of jesus there's someone going through deliverance right now 
And there has been an assignment of death over your life. And has been manifesting through an infirmity that you have been struggling with. The Lord is setting you free right now because the assignment is death. But you shall not die, but you shall live in the name of Jesus Christ. And may the foundations of your life be brought to order in the name of Jesus. May the foundation of your life be brought to order in the mighty name of Jesus. The hand of God is touching many of you right now. Those of you that are dealing with pain within your body, I want you to believe God and put your hand where the pain is. I want you to believe God, knee pain, lower back pain, shoulder pain. The Lord wants to touch you right now. The Lord wants to touch you right, right now. I feel anointing. And there's someone right now that has been dealing with a headache. I just felt something on my head right now that you, you've been dealing with a headache around this area. Pounding, a little bit of pounding in, in your head. The Lord wants to heal you right now. The Lord wants to heal you right now. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your people will be healed. Lower back pain, be healed. Knee pain, be healed. The frontal lobe, be, be healed. Your head, be healed. Your body, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Bronchitis, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed from bronchitis. Oh, shakari andarabas soto. The sum of the Lord is healed right now from pain. The sum of the Lord is healing right now from pain right now. If you're one of the people where the pain is subsidizing, where the pain is going away, where the pain has left, I want you to check your bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to check your body in faith. Get up, move around your body. Move around. Migraines die in the name of Jesus. Asthma dies in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, Vanessa, I pray for your shoulder. That dull pain. I pray in the name of Jesus for healing even now. I pray for healing even now in the name of Jesus. By the time you wake up, I pray that it shall be gone in the name of Jesus. I pray that the, the pain will begin to subsidize even now, that it will begin to evaporate by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Vanessa said, I think it went down, the lung pain. May it disappear forever. May the Lord touch you right now. Acid reflex. Everything to do with that, I pray according to your faith and my faith that it will cease and never come back in the name of Jesus. Anton said, I'm feeling lighter. Yes, in Jesus' name. And may you no longer feel lighter, but may you feel totally delivered and free in the name of Jesus. Someone said, no neck or headache. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. The Lord is doing it right now. The Lord is healing you right now. The Lord is healing you right now. He says, I'm healing you from asthma. Yeah, some of you are struggling breathing. The Lord is touching you. The Lord is touching you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that those that are battling asthma, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would heal them, heal them, heal the children, heal the children, Jesus, heal the children. Yeah. Father, we curse asthma in the name of Jesus. I curse it at the root. Anything that is a reflect of sin or reflect of witchcraft, even if it's not demonic, I pray now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will heal that child that is battling with asthma in the name of Jesus. May the breath and the wind of God come upon them even now where they have access to the life source of God even now in Jesus' name. 
the lord is breathing on many of you right now the wind of god is breathing on many of you right now i just want you to breathe in right now in faith you're receiving the wind of god even upon you now in jesus name those digestive problems in the name of Jesus come on there's someone that has been going through deliverance Amanda it won't last for long God is doing your his work in your son it won't last for long you will see a miracle continue to pray and have faith because you will see a miracle Amanda you will see a miracle I said, you will see a miracle. You will see a miracle. It won't last for long. It won't last for long. You will see a miracle. You will see a miracle. Every biological disorder. We pray that there will be a miracle. In the name of Jesus. There's someone going through deliverance right now. Ashley. I want you to place your, ear, your hand on your ear because I believe the Lord can touch you right now in the name of Jesus. I believe it. I believe it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. He never stops. He never stops working. He never stops. He never stops working. Vanessa said, I receive. She said, I receive. It in the name of Jesus. I feel nothing at this moment. Praise God. Pain has faded. May it continue to fade. And may whatever is out of place, may it come into place. In the name of Jesus. May there be a greater testimony that comes from you. Father, I pray for the woman of God that has ringing in her ear. Uh, Ashley. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that the ringing in her ear will cease completely. Whatever is out of alignment, whatever imbalance, whatever is inconsistent with how you have created her. I pray that the ringing will stop now in the name of Jesus. I command that ringing to cease in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost right now, I command it to, to, to stop. I command it to stop in the name of Jesus. We pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. Viva said, I'm going through deliverance. I'm gagging and I'm throwing up. Yes. Let God set you free from illnesses you're not even aware of. Cancer must die now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Some of you will email me by tomorrow. Some of you by next week. Some of you by next month. And you will say, man of God. As you prayed this prayer, the pain left. They, I went to the doctors and they said the cancer shrunk or the cancer's not there anymore. Man of God, there's no longer diabetes. Things are going down. This will be something. There is an anointing for that right now over this line. And no demon or force in hell can contain what God is doing in your life right now. Oh my God. It is here strong. It is here strong. And Father, I pray it comes even more. That it comes even more. Even more. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. May the kingdom of God touch you and visit you where you are. And may deliverance, deliverance be your portion. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. May it come even now. May the heavy bleeding cut off. Some, some, some of the women on here, by tomorrow, in the morning, you'll realize that your cycle will begin. You'll realize that the heavy bleeding has ceased and regular cycles have begun. Some of you will be by tomorrow morning and you will see me post something on my Facebook or whatever. In the name of Jesus, that either the heavy bleeding has stopped or the cycle has begun. You will see the testimony. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We thank you for the testimonies. 
We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the deliverance. Many people are going through deliverance right now, but my time has come to an end. My time has come to an end. Listen, may the Lord be with all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. It was a blessing to be able to pray for you, to teach, to minister and, and whatnot. Um, be sure to email me if there was any healing in your body. If the cycles have ended, if the heavy bleeding has ended, or if the cycles have started for the first time in a long time. If things are changing with the cancer, the diabetes, whatever it is, contact me. High blood pressure, contact me. Because there's a heavy anointing right now. God has done something powerful. All right? But anyhow... Um, may God heal you, Carmen, in Jesus' name. And may the Lord heal your heart. And may not your heart influence your well-being. I pray for healing in your heart and your whole body in Jesus' name. Oh, may the Lord touch you right now. Hey, yeah. May the Lord heal you in Jesus' name. Um. Anyways, guys, may the Lord bless you guys. If you if you would like to if you were blessed tonight and you like to sow into the ministry support the ministry you can the information is on the screen me and my wife will definitely pray over she's not awake right now i will pray over all the seeds and uh the gifts that have come in but anyways guys i get out i gotta get out of here may the lord bless you feel free to email me your testimonies and praise reports in the name of jesus christ i love you may the lord be with you in the